I grew up singing a song in church called Grace is Greater Than Our Sins. Uh, how many of you from the, an older church background are familiar with that? Marvelous Grace. And it was a wonderful song. Then I learned that there was actually more to the whole thing. Works, but not my works. God's works. And that's called grace. Because grace is God's works. Law was man's works. Grace is God's works. But it's not just a matter of as wonderful and marvelous as that is, it's not just a matter of forgiveness from sin. It's a gracing for every act, every single element of life in all of its variety and manifests in all of its variety. And that's what we've been emphasizing in the last two weeks, and I'm going to finish it up today. Life may be tough, but God's grace is tougher. Life may be tough, but God's grace is tougher. God's grace, you know, the old Star Trek introduction that goes, space, the final frontier, going where man has never gone before. Well, that'll fit, actually. Grace is the Starship Enterprise. And it takes you where natural man has ever gone before on a daily basis. Here's the thing. Grace works all the time, every time, when it's mixed with faith. Our part is mixing it with faith. Now, the reason that we are talking about and, 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 and describing the varieties of grace here is because the more we understand, the more we have confidence in. Now, I'm not just talking about academic learning. I'm talking about an understanding that, that comes by inputting information, of course, because the Holy Spirit doesn't work off of a vacuum inside of us. But it's about God showing His light on that information in a way that reveals how that applies to you personally. Because that's what He's always revealing, Fred. He wants to let you see a scripture or a truth in such a way that you go, oh, I see how, oh, that's how this applies to me personally. That's the kind of revelation he's always, always bringing, Dee Dee, always. He's wanting us to know how his word applies to us personally in a way that makes, well, that makes sense. Because once there's revelation on it, then it makes sense to you. But it's not just natural common sense. It's just, oh, it's revealed. It don't, you know, that we have a lot of religious sounding words because we use them so much in context with religious kind of things, spiritual things. But I mean, there's all, you know, when something dawns on you, you're just, you're saying, I got a revelation. If it dawned on, or I just realized, that means you just saw it. And that's a revelation. That's what he's talking about in there. He's not talking about weird, spooky stuff. He's talking about there's another level to live on, and that's where natural man has never gone before. But he's inviting us into that place on a regular basis. Well, our scripture verse that has been our key scripture, we'll just read it one more time and explain it even just a little bit more. And God is able... Who? Oh, you know what? I want you to imagine in your mind, Chris, something that is very difficult for you right now. Just something. Anything. It could be emotional. It could be anything whatsoever. And then as I walk back up here to get the pressure off of you, I want you to say, but God is able. God is all powerful to accomplish everything he has ever promised. But God is able to make or cause all grace to abound to you. Not just in general, to you, very specifically. 
to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times you may abound in every good work now the word every time there for all and in the last one that's every it's the same greek word pas and it means every kind of it means every kind of and god is able to make every kind of grace i guess there's more than one kind of grace is able to make every kind of grace abound to you in other words that word means to exceed a fixed number is there something in your life that you think is fixed that, that you ju it just can't be gone? There's no way to get beyond it. Everything is stacked against you. There's no way to get beyond it. God is able to make grace, Larry, take you beyond that fixed number. That's what it means to abound. He is able to make every kind of grace abound unto you exceed at a fixed number so that having every kind of sufficiency and that the word sufficiency as we know it from paul when god said my grace is sufficient for you we typically think in terms of it well if something is sufficient depending especially if you've lived lived with a lack mentality we define that word to mean you know it goes along with god's promise to meet our needs not our wants well, you know, you don't need really very much. I only, want, I only want to live by what I absolutely need. Then, then most, a lot of you in here get ready to get stripped of just about everything that you count on right now. You know, that, the fact of the matter is, is that it's not a matter of he just supplies our needs, he supplies our wants. Now, some of you are in situations that you're in because you are not you're not aware of the fact you don't really want anything different than you have right now now I've gone to meddling some of you don't really want anything more than what you've got because if you wanted something more than what you've got then you would be looking to God's grace rather than your own strength to produce that in your life. We get what we want. You know, I prayed for a, I prayed for a lady one time that was blind, had been blind for years, and, she, and, and, and I've prayed for people that are blind that receive their sight, by the way. That, and that's, that's first grade stuff. Remember I said that? That's God's grace, that's not me. I just operated by faith on it. I crossed the chicken line. And if it didn't happen, I was going to look like a fool. And if it did, I'd be a hero. I mean, whatever. You know, it's just... But, but all the time, knowing I don't do this stuff. I mean, I can't heal a headache, let alone a serious disease. But this lady was blind. And uh, as I, you know, it's, as I'm praying for her, I hear the Spirit of God saying to me, nothing is going to happen because she doesn't want anything to happen. Because she's too afraid that what a sighted life will mean for her because she's depended so long on what has been given to her in a non-sighted world. She's too afraid of losing the support that she now has so nothing will happen pray if you want to it's nice words I mean the Spirit of God is speaking that inside of me so I kind of wrapped it up in Jesus name <laughs> you know people really will get what they want people go into outlandish debt to get what they want People are motivated to get what they want. It's about what you want. Do you want more of the operation of God's grace in your life? Or do you just want to hear powerful messages that go, Whoa, that was cool. Or are we listening, myself included, because I want something more than what I'm experiencing right now. 
There you go. I want something more than what I'm experiencing right now. So therefore, because you remember, I, I, in the first lesson we talked about the quantum physics of it, and it was called the law of observation. And, and if God's grace was just so abundantly there all of the time, how come it's not working for me? Well, you ain't paying any attention to it because the law of quantum fix, uh, mechanics says by the law of observation, which they don't get, but they recognize it's there, it, once there's observation of something in matter, it changes, it activates into a different substance. So we have all kinds of things going on in our lives based on what we're paying attention to, folks. What are you paying attention to? That is what will activate for you. What are you paying attention to? That is what will activate for you. And so if you're paying attention to grace, and as you begin to understand, wait a minute, grace is this and this and this and this, and I start paying attention to more of those kinds of graces and realizing what it is, then it becomes more activated, more activated, more activated, and I start experiencing that, and I, start, and I also stop experiencing as much of the other nonsense going on that it is pure flesh and devil and sin. Whatever we pay attention to, whatever you pay attention to will activate for you. You don't remember anything else today. Whatever you pay attention to, Sam, will activate for you. Whatever, Sam, you pay attention to will activate for you. So I think, you know, it doesn't take too many smarts, too much intelligence to say, wait a minute, it's a better deal to pay attention to God's graces. Unless you got the spirit of stupid on you. <laughs> At any rate, how many of you ever thought in terms of, I want to do great things for God? That sounds really good, doesn't it? I want to do great, you know, it's my goal in life to do great things for God. I'm going to suggest you change your goal. <laughs> there ain't nothing you could do for him that he can't do for himself, number one. But, there, but there's a, the fact of the matter is, is there is a legitimate motivation that what you're really saying by that is that you want to do things that are just out of the ordinary, that are good, you know, to, to prove that uh, to yourself, to God, that you really love Him and those kind of things, you know. But I want to do great things for God. I suggest that you change that goal to I want to do graced things with God. Instead of I want to do great things for God, I want to do graced things with God. Because that's the only way things that could be measured as great will ever happen anyway. Because it takes grace to make great things or else you're only going to be able to rise to your level of natural competence. How many of you in here would like to rise above the level of your natural talents and competence? Rise above the level of your natural given opportunities? Then you're going to, take, if you got, then you got to start paying attention to grace, Denise. Start paying attention to grace. But what I'm saying is that it's not about doing great things for God. It's about doing graced things with God. Because grace will produce far more than your mind can ever imagine. And your words will ever be able to request. He says that in Ephesians 3. Remember grace is the business end of love. Grace is the business end of love. And so if you really want to know God's love, then pay attention to grace. 
because it takes grace to activate his love. And by the way, this whole thing about mercy, by the way, I was thinking about this a little minute ago. Mercy is not just pity. If it's just pity, if it, see, mercy is very actively, per, is actively pursues. It's God, he's running, what's causing him to run after your mess is his mercy. He's not just having pity on you when he's showing mercy. He is actively pursuing you so that he can pour out his graces upon you. And whatever specific graces his wisdom tells him is your greatest need at that moment. You have a different need for grace in one moment, Therese, than you have in another moment. And so it's the specific grace you need at any given time that that's the grace that he will manifest in your life. And so you've got all kinds of experiences and circumstances throughout the day that need the grace of God. Well, I recognize that you can just go, well, God, you know, he'll do something for me because I'm forgiven of my sin. And they call, you call that grace. But that doesn't activate much of anything for you except that you're really talking about mercy right there anyway. But grace is doing far more for you than you will ever deserve. Mercy, you not getting what you do deserve. Grace is you getting far more than you do deserve. So it's not about what you deserve. So stop thinking about, you know, that's why I said stop, stop sucking your self-condemnation thumb. That's just, that's a waste of time. That's just plain a waste, a waste, a waste of time. Yeah, and, and what you're do, really doing is focusing on how bad you've screwed up once again. How bad you feel about how you haven't done it. That's already been taken care of. You don't really have to go there. It doesn't impress God that you go there. And it doesn't help you get anywhere else. 1 Corinthians 15.10 says this, I am what I am by God's grace. By God's grace says, I am what I am. Oh, we, Tony, we, we self-righteously say that all the time. Well, I am what I am because I know God did it. Yeah, but you think you did it. <laughs> <laughs> But right now, you just sound and humble. I am what I am by God's grace, and God's grace hasn't been for nothing. How could God's grace be for nothing? When you don't activate it by paying attention to it. God's grace can be for nothing in your personal life if you ignore it or just let it be this general blob of something out there because he's just great. I am what I am by God's grace, and God's grace hasn't been for nothing. In fact, I have worked harder than all the others. That is, it wasn't me, but the grace of God that was within me. So what does grace do? It motivates you to work hard, accomplish a specific goal that he has you on the path for. The reason Paul says he works so hard was because he had given himself over to the grace of God and the grace of God motivated him to be active. But he recognized it wasn't his choice to be active because how great I am, how great I am. But because God's grace, he recognized. Paul, basically Paul was saying, I wouldn't be anything but an old stinking Pharisee if it wasn't for just putting rules on other people and killing Christians and being proud of how I knew what the scriptures really said and protecting God my whole job is to protect God that's what the Pharisees were doing and they were putting up all kinds of things called fence laws which meant they were so don't do this so that you don't get anywhere near of course the problem was they wouldn't not only would they not go into the promised land, which has a present-day 
application. Not only, there is a pr promised land of grace for today. You carry it with you. But not only would they not go into the promised land, but, but by their words, they're fighting over religion. They prevented others from getting in too. All right, he is able to do abundantly beyond anything I could ask or imagine because of the active power of grace that is within me. In the New Testament, the word grace, Holy Spirit, are virtually synonymous. In fact, you can transpose the words without really doing any damage to anything. Wherever you see Holy Spirit, substitute the word grace. Where you see the word grace, substitute the word Holy Spirit. Because they were virtually synonymous. So what is the difference? Well, grace describes what he does. Holy Spirit describes who he is as a person. 1 Corinthians 12 is the instruction on spiritual gifts. And we talk about the spiritual gifts here. But if we were to break down, accurately break down the language, you'll, see, you'll read it. Something like this, and it depends on the translation you're reading. There are diversities of gifts, but you could break it down and put it in today's speak. There are a variety of the Spirit's expressions of grace. In that verse, and in the verses that describe it, where it says gifts, it's the, the Greek word is Charis or charismata. Charis is the word for grace. And so the gifts, why did, it, why did they translate it as gift? Well, because it was free. You didn't earn it. And that's the only reason I could figure that they would have called it, called it gifts in that place. But what it really is is basically the same word as grace. It's the charis. And the other, you put stuff on the end of that, it just simply makes it a plural or a specific kind of. So that, what that is, the, what we know as the gifts of the Holy Spirit are the graces of the Holy Spirit, or they are different expressions of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit expresses himself different ways. And so, uh, you know, grace manifests as knowing something you would have no way of knowing through any process of natural thought. That's the one, of, one of the ways grace expresses itself. Holy Spirit expresses himself. Grace, Holy Spirit. It has nothing to do with natural process of academic learning or daily observation. You couldn't have known it otherwise. And that's the way, that's one way that the Holy Spirit expresses himself. Or God's grace that manifests as divinely inspired solutions for things. Where you just wouldn't have come up. Like for example, when Gary gives testimony of how he will just, he'll either have a dream or he'll sit. And a friend of mine used to just, he couldn't figure out how to fix something. And he would sit and stare at it and say, God, and he'd just kind of pray in the spirit. And all of a sudden, he'd get an idea. Something would dawn on him. A divine solution that he just had no idea how to solve it otherwise. It's also found in other places, like for example, when there were two fighting mothers over the same baby. And the king goes, okay, here, I'll tell you. Well, I'll find out, because he couldn't find out any other way. I mean, everybody had facts on their side. And so he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll just cut this baby in half and give you each a half. We'll be fair about it. And one of the moms said, whoa, no. And he said, okay, the baby's yours. Because that's how he found out how the true mother, who the true mother was. That was a manifestation of supernatural wisdom. This is not a wisdom that you, you learn through experience. Over time, we figure out how to do things, okay? We figure out how to put things together. Our, our minds are very powerful. We can learn stuff. 
But there are many times the fact is that you think you figured something out. I don't know how many times I've said to my wife, I, I just figured this out. <laughs> no, I didn't. I just got a word of wisdom. It's been in the Holy Spirit. It's not been in the brain. It's been in the Holy Spirit. And it came out of Him. And I was desiring to have wisdom on how to solve something. I needed to solve something. I was focused on grace, solution grace. Solution grace. What is the solution? Solution grace. I need your help, God. Solution grace. Because I was paying attention to that. It came. It wasn't... To think that it just comes out of the universe is new age. To think that it just comes out of somewhere in me is as me as the source, that's new age. But that's the main difference between a lot of things that are new age and things that are actually true for us. And that is that the new age, even the laws of attraction, there's something true about the laws of attraction. I just have been explaining it to you today. But the laws of attraction aren't something that's in the universe that somehow in the universe, the universe just attracts it to me. No, when I pay attention to it, the grace of God activates and brings it to me. All right, so we've got, you know, God's grace that manifests as the thoughts of God's heart for the purpose of bringing supernatural strengthening or comfort or caution or motivation. That's another way His grace manifests. Here it happens to be called a word of prophecy or it call, it's called a gift of prophecy. And that's the one he says, by the way, above all things, that's the one you want. And that's, you know, because God wants to be speaking. To, did you know that God wants to speak to people all of the time that don't read the Bible? And he can through you. There's lots and lots and lots of people. And that even includes y'all brothers and sisters. God wants to speak to us all of the time. He really wants to speak to us. But we don't read the Bible. Well, His mercy pursues us anyway, and He gives us a word through one of us. God is not trapped inside a book. He's not trapped inside of a book called the Bible. Because He's still speaking today. He didn't stop speaking when the canon of Scripture was closed. That's a very wonderful foundation. One of the reasons, though, that people don't really get into the word, Merle, is because they've been really kind of really scarred and burned over by the whole thing of the Bible. You know, you, there, it gets to be a real legalistic thing about, you know, you're not a good Christian if you don't, man, if you're not reading 10 chapters a day, you'll never keep the devil away. You know, and it becomes, it, it really becomes a works-oriented thing. Am I excusing or saying it's not important to get into the Word of God? Not at all. Because that's a, so, that, that's a source point for meditation so that the Holy Spirit can then activate it and become applicable to you. And to neglect that is just, once again, the spirit of stupid. Yeah. God's grace... I am almost done, by the way. God's grace also manifests as supernatural self-control. You know, there are certain circumstances, a lot of times it's like it's gotten way beyond us. It's like we flash without thinking. We just, we just have no control when it comes to certain things. Okay, if you've got areas where you have no control, then I say start paying attention to the fact that God has got supernatural self-control as a grace of his spirit now in the scriptures it's called fruit of the spirit what is fruit it is the product of the work of the tree it's fruit of the spirit see all of these things and that i'm going to go into more detail on that some of you are thinking you see he's not really going to quit yes i am <laughs> i'm sitting down to prove it i'm getting away from my notes well i don't need notes i can blither on forever <clears throat> but <laughs> I'm, I'm, what I want to know is what you were just clapping at, Fred. 
<laughs> yeah, he's over. <laughs> Yeah, hey, uh, I am going to get into a lot, I'm going to break this down in a lot of detail, though, in the next class session that starts January 17th. It'll start January 17th, it's going to be a, a seven-week series, it's a Kingdom of God series, and that segment will be Life Beyond Limitations, Life Beyond Limitations, it's Sunday afternoons at five, like, just like we've been doing, uh, but we're on break right now. So January 17th is a Sunday. We just re we initiate classes on January 17th, Sunday, January 17th at 5 o'clock here.